I started going to therapy this year and honestly, I'm super proud of myself. And the coolest part is the mental health clinic that I go to is not your average mental health clinic. It's pretty special. Hey y'all, I'm Robbie Couch, host of Views From The Couch, and my videos are almost as gay as I am. I use this channel to talk about my personal experiences as an LGBTQ person and how it relates to bigger issues facing the queer community. So if you're into gay stuff, you should subscribe. Actually, even if you're not into gay stuff, you should subscribe. Just subscribe to my channel. Also super quick before I get into my therapy stuff, before I have a therapy session with y'all, there is a really cool contest that's launching today on Views From The Couch where you could win free stuff, but you gotta watch the video to learn the details about it. And don't skip ahead, because I'll know if you skipped ahead. So y'all, I am so freaking excited. I'm so freaking excited. Isn't that the Kristen Wiig? Who's that Kristen Wiig SNL character? So freaking excited! The surprise woman. Anyway, so in honor of Pride Month, in honor of June, I'm launching a brand new series here on Views From The Couch called Queer Doing Cool Things. And I'm super excited about this series because I'm gonna be highlighting queer people who are doing really cool things. It could be their career, it could be a hobby, it could be just a special project that they're doing on the side. And it doesn't necessarily have to be directly related to LGBTQ activism either. I just wanted to highlight LGBTQ people doing cool things in their community. Why am I doing this? Because I think queer people are dope. I think we're badass. I think we're resilient. I think we've gone through some sh and we deserve to like pat ourselves on the back and celebrate ourselves. So this brings me back to my therapist's office and starting therapy in 2019. I'll be honest, being on camera is really scary for me. And this has been a really exciting adventure, but also a really overwhelming and intimidating one. And so there's a lot of things associated with being on the internet that I was like, I need to, I need to talk, I need to talk to someone. I need to unpack this. I need to like think through it in a constructive, productive way. I wasn't necessarily like thinking my therapist had to be an LGBTQ person, but they at least had to be an ally and had to be someone who knows their <laughs> when it comes to the mental health of LGBTQ people. That's when I discovered the I Am Clinic here in Denver, Colorado. Um, they accept patients who are straight and heterosexual, of course, and cisgender, but they have a special focus on LGBTQ patients and the vast majority of people who seek care at the I Am Clinic are LGBTQ. And that's when I discovered Isaac. He's the founder of the I Am Clinic and he has this incredible story as an LGBTQ person of faith who grew up in an incredibly conservative community. We talked about both his personal story as an LGBTQ person and the clinic itself, and it was so interesting and cool. I love Isaac. All right, check it out. I Am Clinic is an outpatient psychotherapy practice designed specifically for the LGBTQ community and their religious parents. We do couples counseling, coming out work, um, straight parents of gay children. And so why do you think it is important to have a place like I Am Clinic being inclusive for LGBTQ people and their families? I've been lucky enough to do this for 10 years and I think that there's something really specific that happens during the, the closeted years of our life and during the coming out when you become a niche psychotherapist, you're not so generalized and you get the benefit of hearing the same story, similar stories over and over and over again. And um, it's really easy to kind of get in there and help as quickly as possible. I also think that there's something about having someone similar to you speak into your life. I know when I was a little boy living closeted, if, I just remember thinking if there was just someone like me, who could help teach me the ropes or tell me I'm going to be okay. So I spent from 9 till about the age of 26, I'm 35 now, praying every day that God would um, like make me straight. And when those prayers weren't working in high school, I started fasting two meals every day. So there would be like some days. When we grow up closeted, what we're kind of subconsciously telling ourselves is, I keep people happy by hiding who I am. And I call it the performer dynamic, so I'm here to perform for you by hiding the things that make me authentic. I call it ta da -ing. so it's like, ta-da, right. I'm hiding myself, I'm keeping you happy. That becomes not just something we do in the closet, it becomes the way that we understand our own value. I'm valuable to you because I hide myself. And that sets us up in relationships to think that that's how we're valuable. And that's a theme that I talk about all day long, every day. Yeah. It's so pervasive. Right. So 
So I came out when I was 22 and my parents um, did the best that they could at the time. They put me in conversion therapy mm. and I did that for a couple of months and I hated it. Yeah. And so um, I came out again four years later, kind of as a way to kind of declare my truth and say, this isn't changing, this is who I am. And so when I was 26, it was the, the last time. And since then, um, it's been like this incredible journey um, of self-acceptance, of just falling in love with who I am rather than in love with who I could become. And I think that's part of why I love what I do so much, just to change that I am narrative, the narrative that says I am despicable and disposable to I am strong. I am lovable. Right. I am, I'm beautiful just the way I am. Growing up Hispanic in a very kind of machismo culture, I, I used to tell people it feels like there's a sticker on my head. You know, like everybody can see it and I have no idea what it says. But no matter how I walk or how I dress or how much I try to filter my personality and my hand gestures, that people can still see this thing on my forehead. Have you noticed a change in perception and attitudes within the religious community? Has it become more accepting of LGBTQ people, or is that something you've noticed at all? I've noticed a massive shift, thankfully. Okay. Cool. Absolutely. When I started, I was getting tons, gobs of parents saying, my child is coming out. Here, Isaac, fix them, change them. And so my work during those early years wasn't actually trying to change the child, but to try to change the way the parents were attaching to their child. I find it really important to kind of offer those services for religious people because that's where a lot of homophobia is. We're here for everybody. My parents are the most loving people on the planet and they hold very beautifully a, a profound paradox. Inside Christianity, there are so many things to debate. You know, is this true or is that true? From denomination to denomination, Christians do not agree on many things. And my parents, I think, really respect who I've become as a clinician, as a spiritual person, um, in that they say we might not agree on one really small facet of theology, but we agree that we love each other. And my parents fully embrace me and my partner with the utmost love and I wish that most Christian parents could really love their queer children the way that mine love me. Because um, it's not about agreeing necessarily, it's about maintaining that familial attachment in a beautifully healthy way. I honestly believe that one of the deepest root systems to homophobia is the Christian theology. I find it really important to kind of offer those services for religious people because that's where a lot of homophobia is. Mm -hmm. But. Um, we're here for everybody. Oh, Isaac is so cool. Don't you guys love Isaac? He's like the biggest sweetheart ever. It was so fun to chat with him and to learn more about the I Am Clinic and how it got off the ground. It was just such a cool experience. For anyone who's interested, I'm gonna link uh, in the description to a source for LGBTQ people who are struggling with their mental health and maybe wanna reach out and talk to someone. So yeah, check it out in the description because you're not alone. Reach out, get help, talk to someone, you deserve it. I said at the beginning of this video that I would be announcing um, a contest where you guys could win some free stuff through Views from the Couch. So here's what you could win. The first thing you could win is the Home and Go Portable Charger by My Charge, um, which looks pretty dope. As you can see, it's Pride themed, which is very, it's very on brand for what we're going for right now. A portion of the sales go towards the Trevor Project, which is an LGBTQ youth suicide prevention group. They do a lot of amazing work. Then there's this rainbow striped t-shirt from Express. It's a part of Express's Love Unites campaign, which is giving 25% of the proceeds from each item to GLAAD, which is an LGBTQ advocacy group. The third thing in this pride pack, which I am especially excited for, is this shaving kit from Harry's. Even cooler than the razor itself is the fact that 100% of the profits goes towards the Trevor Project. And then there's this magnificent t-shirt. Who could resist this t-shirt? I think I'm gonna buy this one too. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna buy my own pride pack for myself because all these are too dope to pass on. 
In honor of Pride Month, Target is partnering with Gleason and donating $100,000 towards the nonprofit, uh, which focuses all of its efforts on making schools as inclusive as possible for LGBTQ students. So here's how you can enter and win all of these magnificent things. First things first, make sure you're subscribed, hit that subscribe button. You absolutely have to be subscribed in order to enter the contest. Then step number two, comment below on this video and explain what pride means to you. Maybe you're just really excited to hang out with your friends and go to a parade. Maybe you're going to the cool protest. You should protest. We should all be protesting this horrible presidency. And that's it. Then you could win our pride pack. Yay. The contest launches today. It will run through June. I will be announcing a winner on Tuesday, July 16th. Could be you. All right, that's it for me, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to enter the contest by commenting. And also make sure to check in next Tuesday for the second installment of Queer People Doing Cool Things. All right, have a good one, guys. See ya.